All right, so we've gotten to my favorite part of this video series, and that's where we're going to do kernel modifications. So here you can see we have swim rom, excuse me, swim rom lollipop, and uh, we're in that directory in the terminal. Um, I'm just going to show you the out directory is empty, and we're going to look at building boot images in kernel. So <clears throat> we see we have our kernel here kernel folder, and it's the Samsung uh, JF and JF-AKLU, the last Linux user variant. So uh, we're looking at the kernel for the Samsung Galaxy S4, and JF is the, uh, the um, default that you get from like Lineage or something like that. And uh, the AKLU is just one that I've worked on before. So we see under our devices tree, <clears throat> For the JF Common device, Samsung JF Common, we see we have the board config common file here. And of course, it's going through and telling us how to build everything for this device. But what I want to focus on is for the kernel itself. Now, we talked about some of this stuff in the previous videos and um, as we were going through building everything. But what I want to touch on, see this line here, this is board kernel command line. And this is telling it, hey, when you boot this kernel, when you load this kernel, I want these commands to be run at that time. Uh, you can see where the uh, base and the make boot arm arguments are, telling it essentially where to start. Page, excuse me, page size config to tell you which configuration to use when building, and the source to show you which um, place to go and find the code for building this kernel. So we have our <clears throat> kernel source, we're using this JS folder that's holding all of our um, kernel source. And we're looking for that cyanogen mod uh, config file. So we could just use find files. That's something you could always do. Uh, we have to know where it is. So arch arm config. And then we can look at that cyanogen mod df def config. And there it is right there. So if we open that with gedit or gedit, uh, we noticed that it is uh, kernel version 3.4.103, and we're not supposed to edit it. Uh, at least that's what it says. <clears throat> that would be no fun. So we're going to break that rule uh, pretty much right out of the gate here. But in this file, what do we see? We see a lot of information, and most of it will probably not make sense to you yet. And to some degree, some of it may not ever make sense. Um, but we're going to look at what most of this kind of groups into and how we can manipulate these and how we can change things and change uh, what we want to build. So for instance, here's like the IO schedulers. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to have videos just for that. Um, what's something else we can see in here? <clears throat> That's interesting processor type, processor features, um, kernel features, you know, your boot options and everything. You can read just as well as I can, but you notice this is a really long file, several thousands of lines long, just about 4,000 lines. In this case, some are longer than others. So <clears throat> what, uh, what this file does is while it's building the kernel, it says for each option that it comes to, do I want to build this? Yes no or make a module so here we see a yes option we need this to be built so the answer is yes and then we see an is not set option and this is typical of something that either you didn't pick or you said no specifically to um, it's going to show up as is not set um, so obviously we say is not set or no to something that we just don't need let's see if we can find a um, module there's no modules in this particular kernel. There's no nodes because all the nodes are just is not set. <clears throat> but a module would be something like this here, generic time. We're saying, yes, we want to build that. But if we do a module, we're saying we want to build it, but as a separate part, not inside the kernel itself, but a separate part that you can just load into the kernel yourself. And you use uh, different tools like insmod, um, and mod probe to insert those things, those mod 
modules into the kernel. Um, so modular kernel is something you might might hear. That's not exactly what this means by saying mod, but that you can load something in. We see the local version, uh, science and mod. There is just that's the name of it that's going to show up when you build it. Um, and so we are we are ready to build this. So again, we have our terminal here. Um, we're in Slim ROM Solid Pop. We see our out directory is empty, and we're going to build the kernel now. Before we were building Android, we were building everything, and so we set up our build environment setup dot shell, just like we did before, just like we saw in our Lollipop videos, and we run the breakfast command to say we want to build Slim underscore CFLTE TMO, building that same phone that we built. We'll do the user debug variant. Same thing that we did when we were building for Slim in our previous videos. And it loads it up, says, yes, you want to build uh, 511, you know, Android uh, Lollipop, user debug variant, uh, Slim JFLTE TMO. <clears throat> and, uh, but we don't want to spend 11 hours building the entire thing. We just want to build uh, just the part that we want. So how do we tell it we only want to build the kernel? Now, if we run make, that's going to build everything. That's what we saw before. But we have another option, MKA. So we can say MKA boot image. I just want to build the boot image itself, which has the kernel and the booting argument. Or you could say user data, uh, MKA system, whichever partition it is that you want to build, you just want to make that. And so in this case, we, we do want to do the uh, boot image. So we're going to do that. And when we hit enter here, now instead of making all of Android, it's only going to make a small portion of it, just the things required to make that boot image. Now note here, we do have a uh, tool version problem. We're supposed to be using uh, OpenJDK-7, and on this machine, I have OpenJDK-8. And so it's saying, hey, you have a problem. You're using the wrong version of Java for building Android. <clears throat> but um, we're not building all of Android. This really isn't a problem for what we're hoping to do um, right now. So we will let this build, <clears throat> excuse me. And while this builds, you see that the build is, is continuing. Um, that was just a, a warning. It's saying something isn't quite wrong with the Java version, but it allowed me to continue. Sometimes that will fail, especially if the version is lower than it's supposed to be. But okay, so it starts reading all the header files, and now it's starting to go through and build all these C files and C++ files and, um, and creating the kernel that we asked it to build. The process is going to take about six to eight minutes. Uh, if we go to our target now, we start to see that there's stuff into in our out folder, out target product JS LP TMO, and we see uh, we have you know um, you know different pieces of, of things being built and filling in in this folder. And eventually this folder is going to contain the boot image that we need. Um, so right now it's just going through uh, building some things for the target of ARM. This particular phone is an ARM phone, right? ARM processor. And it's uh, building C files and C++ files here. <clears throat> Maybe this one we can take a look at as it goes by. Um, one thing to note that the kernel for Android is a Linux kernel, and uh, so a lot of people get a little bit confused about that. Um, Linux, they think of as the desktop operating system, but that desktop operating system is actually new Linux, GNU. Linux um, and not necessarily Linux. Linux itself is just the kernel that drives that operating system. Um, but generically speaking, when people say Linux, they mean the desktop operating system, like you see in the background here of uh, 
Debian um, or Ubuntu when we were building earlier. So let's uh, let's look at something here. So it's building all these file system things. And so if we go to our kernel, we're in the kernel Samsung JS folder, and we see that it's building all these FS file system things. And as it's scrolling by, we're just kind of looking at some here. So if we go into that folder to see exactly what is it doing, we, we saw JVD2 fly by there. And it's going into each folder, checking um, the make file and the kconfig to say, hey, was that option chosen as a yes? or not defined or a module. And if it is defined, like this kconfig for JBD2 um, tells you about what it is, um, debugging support for EXP4 and whatnot. Um, it says, hey, was I supposed to build this? And if it is supposed to build that, then it's going to read the make file and say, hey, what do I do to uh, make this? And it says, okay, I need you to put together these objects. And of course, there's no object files in the folder that we're looking at. There's just C files. And so the C files need to get compiled to make the objects that it needs. So each one of those object files corresponds to one of these C files by exact verbatim name. Just one ends with .o, and the uh, building file starts with .c. So if we open one of these C files, just to take a look at the code in here, you see some includes, it's including some information. It has some functions in here um, and uh, variables that are putting together to um, make something happen. So that's what's going on kind of behind the scenes. Um, we just saw, you know, the drivers go by. Uh, it's building drivers right now uh, for the different functions that it needs to run. Obviously, like when you install drivers, so you can do something. So we just saw like USB drivers go by. Okay, so right now it's in this folder looking around and it's saying I need to build um, for these different options if they said yes. Now notice there's some default options set in there and it's saying, yeah, I really need you to build those. And then it reads the make file and says, hey, how do I build that option that, uh, that needs to be built? And it's turning those C or C++ files into um, object files. So here we are. Uh, the build uh, is complete. So you know, and here we look at a, a, another example of a C file that we we just looked at those a few minutes ago. But but we see our our build is complete. It took us about six minutes. And now if we go to our um, out folder we see we have this boot.image file. And we know that's the one we just built because here it says made boot image and it has this path which leads to this boot.image file. So now we have that boot.image file that we can flash to our phone using something like fastboot or building a package for twerp. Uh, 